Hi, I'm Andy Jones, Content Editor for Plaid's online education program, Let's Paint. And today, I'm going to take you to the beach, where you can stick your toes in the sand and enjoy cool ocean breezes, while I show you how to use folk art acrylics, blending gel, and even a palette knife to create this beautiful seascape. Come on, let's paint. I like to work on something that's not quite the norm, and I think to do a seascape that's long and horizontal is a little something different. And it helps capture the kind of the expanse that you feel at the ocean shore. And we're going to begin um, our sky using Folk Arts Blending Gel Medium, which is an acrylic retarder that slows down the drying time of your paint. So that's going to help us blend our sky. And to start out, I'm going to put some paint on my palette going to start out with some titanium white. I'm going to use ultramarine blue, going to use Persian blue, and I'm going to use some aqua, as well as just a small amount of dioxazine violet. We'll use more of that later on in the painting, but we'll put just a little hint in the sky. Now the blending gel is a great acrylic retarder because as you can see, it's a nice gel consistency so it doesn't make your paint thin and runny but it does um, slow down the drying time so it gives you plenty of time to manipulate the paint. So I'm going to start with a one inch flat brush and I'm going to dip the brush into the blending gel and I'm just going to brush a thin thin coat of blending gel onto the entire sky area. And this is it's a long sky, so it's going to take me just a minute to get this applied. The canvas that I'm actually working on is a piece of canvas that's cut off of a roll of artist canvas because it's the shape of the canvas is very long and very skinny, and it doesn't come in a pre-manufactured size. So I just cut this off the roll and then glued it into a wooden frame that I found at the craft store. So again, just brushing a really thin coat of blending gel onto the sky area. You want to make sure that you've covered the entire canvas. So if you need to tilt your head so that you can see in the light that you really have gotten the sky covered because the last thing you want is a dry patch of sky. This will cause you no end of frustration when you start to blend and you've got one area that's just dragging and drying on you. So really cover the entire sky with a very thin coat of blending gel. And the sky is not going to be difficult to do. You're just going to have to be patient with yourself as you start to move color around. All right, so we're just going to wipe the paint off the, I mean, wipe the blending gel off the brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and some of my ultramarine blue and my Persian blue. And we're going to start just brushing some of this color on. And because of the blending gel that's on the canvas, it's going to make it a little transparent and easy to move. So again, pick up the blues, a little bit of white, and just brush this on. So we're going to have darker color at the top of our sky. And you see I'm going all the way from side to side. And I'm going to pick up some more of the Persian blue and ultramarine. And just add a little bit more paint. I'm going to wipe the excess off my brush. And pick up more white. And this time, just a little bit of Persian blue and a little bit of aqua and begin to apply that to the canvas. I'm going to try to stay out of my sand dunes. Again, white, Persian blue, and a little bit of aqua. And just continue to brush this on. I'm going right down to the horizon line and then trying to avoid the dunes on the right hand side. I'm going to blot the color out of my brush and I'm going to start to blend the length of the canvas starting right at the horizon line, and I'm going to blend back and forth across the canvas up into the darker color at the top. So there's no specific 
technique here other than using a light pressure on the brush. I'm going to stop and wipe the brush off periodically and then it's just long light strokes back and forth across the canvas and because of the blending gel I'm not having to worry about my acrylic paint drying. Just want to make sure to go all the way across the canvas each time. Back and forth, long light strokes, gently blending the color. When you move color where you don't want it, stop, blot the brush, and then continue on. If I did not have blending gel on my brush, my paint would already be very, very sticky and very difficult to blend. So again, I'm just going to start and go from the bottom, working long light strokes up to the top, creating a nice gradation of color. Now I'm going to pick up a clean number one flat brush and I'm going to use some titanium white. I'm going to hold the brush back on the handle and I'm going to begin to apply my cloud formations. So I'm trying to imagine myself at the beach where it's nice, it's a beautiful day, gentle breeze, you can hear the ocean waves, and I'm going to start and I'm going to kind of scrub and push the white as I form my clouds. So starting here, just putting some white on there and just pushing away, and you'll see that I don't end up with marshmallow clouds begin to scrub and push that color up and away and just kind of feathering it out at the edge. Plenty of time to work with this because of the blending gel keeping my paint wet. So I'm going to move over here and add another round of clouds. Just kind of push the color along. Now I'm going to set those brushes aside for just a minute and take a blue shop towel. Don't try to use a regular paper towel. A blue shop towel um, is not going to leave any sort of lint on your painting. And I'm just going to blot into my clouds and just kind of soften the clouds a little bit. Just adding some texture into the sky which is very nice. And the blending gel again keeps the paint wet long enough for you to play with it and make the clouds look just like you want them to. Don't panic. Just refold your shop towel so it's got a nice little pad on it and then just soften that little area that you don't like away. And so don't uh, try to rush this or you know, be stressed out about it because it's easy to correct anything that you don't like. And I've taken too much color off there so I'm just going to blot my brush and just come back and see how easy that is just to stroke back over that and soften that into the cloud. All right, I'm happy with the sky the way it looks right now. We're not done with it. Um, once we've painted our the ocean and the sand dunes, we're going to come back and we're going to brighten up our clouds again. So this is just the base layer of the sky. So if you want to work up to this point, go ahead and do so and then stop and let your clouds and sky dry. It'll take a little while because you've used the blending gel, but I think this is a good point for you to stop and catch up with me. All right, we've uh, let our uh, clouds and sky dry, and I've added some burnt umber to my palette, and now we're going to paint the ocean and a couple of little waves. So once again, I'm going to use a little blending gel, and I'm just going to paint in the water. There was some blue on my brush. That's not bothering me at all. Don't let it bother you. In fact, I might just wipe some of that out a little bit so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. Again, just a very little bit of uh, blending gel going right along the horizon line. Just take your time and you can paint a nice even horizon and then just blend out the blending gel, staying out of our sand dune as best we can. If you get a little in there, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And again, we just want to get this gel on there so that we have a little extra time to work. All right, so wiping out the brush again and now I'm going to pick up some Persian blue and a little bit of aqua. Blot the excess paint off my brush. I'm just going to tip this just a little bit so it's a little easier to paint and I'm going to start right along the horizon line with this nice rich 
blue and every time you go to the ocean or look at the ocean it's always going to be different no two waves are the same the water's never the same color this one day to the next or even hour to hour so you're in control of what this color looks like I just happen to like this kind of intense aqua blue color and I'm just brushing it right along the horizon line keeping that line as straight as I can pick up some more paint on our brush blot off any excess that you have and then we're just going to lay in some of this color stopping at our sand dunes we don't have a lot of ocean to paint so it's not going to be difficult at all again just making sure that I fill in the canvas with paint and smooth that out with long light strokes taking the excess paint off my brush as I need to I need to come back and just carefully straighten that up looks nice Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more dark color right along the horizon line. So I'm going to use some Persian blue and a little ultramarine. And I'm just going to come back and kind of stroke that extra dark color right at the horizon line. And then soften it as you need to. All right, now I'm going to pick up some titanium white mainly just on one half of the flat brush, just like that. And we're gonna put in a few soft rolling waves. And this is gonna be very easy and I think you're gonna be very surprised at how easy this is for you. I'm gonna stand the brush on the chisel edge and just slide the brush along. I'm gonna add some extra pressure and then I'm just gonna lift up again. It's not very hard. Just adding in a few little waves here and there up a little a bit of white and again just touch the brush press a little bit and then lift back up so that's all we're going to do for the waves and at this point you can let your um, let the ocean water dry and then we'll come back and paint our sand dunes and uh, brush into our seascape now our water has dried and we're going to begin to paint what I think is the most important part of our seascape and it's what I really love seeing at the beach. And those are the sand dunes and the vegetation that grows on the dunes. So to paint these, I need to make a nice gray color because our sand is gonna be anything except stark white. So I'm going to take some burnt umber and some ultramarine blue and some titanium white. And that's gonna give me a nice dull gray color and I think I want my gray color to be a little more brown so I'm just simply going to pick up some more burnt umber and I'm going to start applying some shadow here on this large dune in the back and so I'm just going to put this gray color on and scrub it in this doesn't require any particular skill to do this we're just getting some dirty gray color into our sand dune. I'm going to scrub a little bit at the top of this smaller dune and just kind of let it fade out and do the same thing here on this smaller dune. We're just establishing some gray shadow color on our dunes. So I'm going to wipe the brush. I'm going to pick up some more titanium white and I'm just going to start scrubbing some of this on form the sand dune and just going to kind of roughly scrub it over some of the gray so that you can see this sand dune is not white so we don't yet want to make them white I just want to have some variation in some of this gray on there so on the big dune again just kind of scrubbing some of this on there not trying to blend it smoothly just getting color on the canvas and I'm painting this as a long horizontal seascape. You can apply the same techniques to paint a small little five by seven seascape or a seascape of any size that you want to. The techniques work no matter what the size of the seascape that you're painting. Now over here, this gray had gotten a little dry, so I'm just gonna go back to my palette and pick some of that up 
and then just scrub some of the dark gray back on to that little dune. All right, again, nothing's very difficult, not using crazy techniques here, just scrubbing some paint on. Now I'm gonna wipe my paintbrush off really well because as you know, I did not put any blending gel on the sand dunes. So the paint that's on the dunes right now is going to dry rather quickly. So I can tell just when I try to move the color, this is already nice and sticky, which is exactly the way I want this paint. Because I'm going to pick up some white, I'll just move it a little closer to me on the palette, and picking up paint only on one side of the brush. And what I'm going to do, uh, I've got kind of like the feeling of the sun coming in this way across the canvas. So I'm going to just start in on the light side of the canvas, uh, not the canvas of the sand dunes, and on the light side, just kind of scrub across the dune and let the white paint just glide across the dune. So I can still see lots of patches of the gray underneath, which is good, because that's what I kind of want. I'm just gonna take some of this white and just let it fall off the flat side of the brush. You can't do this if you have too much paint on your brush. So even though you see me loading the brush with paint, not putting too much paint on, just enough so that it kind of just falls off the brush onto the canvas. And that leaves this nice texture in the dunes. I think probably what's gonna be most difficult for you is to put the paint on and just kind of leave it alone. I'm just gonna come back here and just add a little bit there to separate those. And I don't wanna play with it any more than that. Usually as a beginning painter, when you think that you need to do just one more thing to something, that usually should be a very, very good indication for you that you need to stop before you add that one more thing. Because it's that one more thing that more than likely is gonna get you into trouble. You were probably at a great place before you decided to add something extra. So again, just see how easy this paint just falls off the brush and leaves some of the dark color showing underneath. Right, so I'm gonna come back to this dune here and make sure that it's got the brightest whites on it. And let's get a little highlights going on that there. Okay, now that we've piled a lot of white sand on our dunes, we're going to need to let this dry before we come back and we're gonna add all sorts of color to our dunes and then add the vegetation at the top of the dunes. So this is a good spot to pause your video and let your dunes dry and we'll come back and finish up our seascape. All right, now we've let our sand dunes dry out and I've added some sap green to my palette. I'm going to pick up some water on my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of dioxazine violet and just at the top of the dune, I'm just gonna dab on some of this thin violet color and just let it kind of trail down the dune a little bit. Be careful that your color is thin and transparent because that makes it more interesting to see some color underneath. Add a little violet over here. And again, I'm just kind of tapping this color on. Add a little bit of water and let it kind of wash out down the dune a little bit. And one thing about the foliage or the scrub that grows on the top of the dunes is nothing is ever quite exactly the color that you think it is. The uh, scrub foliage is never quite all green. The dunes are never quite all white. So there's a lot of color that you can put in. I'm going to pick up a little bit of sap green and again using my flat brush with water on it. So I'm making the paint thin and transparent. I'm just going to add a little bit of green onto the dune and you don't have to add the same amount to every dune which would be a good thing to have some variety there. I'm just going to add a little bit of blue in and I'm just kind of tapping the brush and letting this thin paint kind of flow off as it wants to. I'm not going to add any blue over there. Okay so that's the start of the foliage or the scrub. I'm going to now switch to a small flat brush and some sap green that I'm not thinning down and I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to this because I want this to be nice and dark and some ultramarine blue. So again, this is sap green, burnt umber, ultramarine blue. So I've got a nice dark color because the interest in the painting is in the contrast of light and dark colors. 
So let's just start here on this dune at the top, and I'm just going to dab some foliage on, because this is the kind of scrub that you really find so often at the beach. And it's not the beautiful, tall, billowing sea oats. This is that kind of thick scrub that you always want to avoid as you're heading down to the beach. But it's beautiful from a distance, and we're going to make it extra pretty with the colors that we're going to put into it. So I'm just dabbing some foliage shape on there and let some of it kind of creep down the dune a little bit because this foliage and scrub is what holds the dunes together. Just going to dab some of that on there. And up here, we're going to do a larger amount of foliage. So let some of this come up and kind of thinking about what this might look like if it's kind of bent and branching a little bit. And I'm just, I'm holding the brush way back on the handle, and I'm just going to kind of dab and pivot the brush to get some variation in size and shapes of these little dabs. Always be thinking about what's going to make your painting look more interesting. And the more variation you have in the size and shape of dabs and marks, or, you know, in the size of the dunes, we've got a big dune a middle dune and a baby dune, so that's got some variation there. So we want some variation in the colors, that's why we're brush mixing these colors together so that we can have some variation. And this is going to be a little bit different color, so I can go over some of the other foliage and just kind of dab it around. Painting is, I always say, you can't paint and do anything else. Uh, you have to pay attention to what you're painting. you got to think about the color, think about the shape, think about the texture. And if you're doing all of that, you're not really thinking about anything else. Painting is your time. It should be a nice kind of zen, relaxing time. If you are painting and it's stressing you out, then you need to stop, and take a break, fix a glass of wine, and then come back and start again. You should always relax and enjoy your painting time. I've been painting most of my life, and it's always the one thing that I can relax and enjoy no matter what else is going on in my world. All right, so I think that's enough of the dark. So I'll set that brush aside, and I'm going to pick up a liner brush, and I'm going to go back into that same dark, dark green color, and maybe a little bit more burnt umber in it. And I'm just going to add some more interesting little lines. My paint's very, very thin, holding the brush back on the handle, and I'm just going to come in here and just trail out some little marks. I, don't, I can't even tell you exactly what they are, but I just think they're going to be kind of interesting little bits of plant material. It's another texture. It's another different shape line. When I talk about creating variety, this is one of those things that does that because we've dabbed and now we've got some little lines on there. I'm going to clean that color out of my brush. And I'm going to pick up just some green. And again, I'm going to make that green nice and thin so that it flows off of my liner brush. I don't know if you can see, but where I dipped my brush in water to clean it out, there's now a drop of water right there where the bristles and the ferrule meet. Always touch your brush at the, on the paper towel right next to that so that that bead of water is gone. If I had taken it to my canvas and applied pressure on the brush, that bead of water would have run down and made a blob on my painting. So you've got to pay attention to those things. And just a couple of little green tenderly lines, not too many, and not the same size, not the same shape. Even though that's a dull green, when you put it on the canvas, it looks nice and bright. Okay, and then just for fun, I'm going to add a couple of little purple marks. Again, this is why the color is never green and never white. There's always something else interesting to look at. And when you look at the painting, you might not notice some of these purple marks, but they're there and they will add interest. Someone will notice them. Okay, let's go back to our little flat brush. And take some of the excess paint off of it. And I'm now going to pick up some yellow citron. And I'm going to start adding some light dabs to the mounds of foliage. And this is going to help separate the lights from the darks and give the little shrub a little bit of form. There's going to be a little bit more to this. 
This is not the final highlight. But it's super relaxing. Just dabbing some of this color on. And think about the light hitting this green foliage. It's a beautiful summer day at the beach. You're gonna dip your toes in the water. This is all part of the whole painting experience. Just letting your mind wander. As we continue to add some yellow citron light areas to this. Let's not forget our little dune over here. Show it some love. And I want this to be a much more vibrant lime color. So lemon yellow and yellow citron together. And you can instantly see just how much brighter that color is. That yellow is really a nice bright color. Really adding a nice bright spark to this. Come up here and add some where I want things to be brighter. You want to add enough highlights so that you can see some variation, but you don't want to turn the whole mound the same color green. A little bit coming down the dune there. If I want this to be super bright, I can add a little bit of white to, to that. So we've got now white, lemon yellow, and yellow citron. Take the excess paint off my brush. Pick that bright color up. And I'm just going to add a little bit of this in just a few places. This is going to be a really kind of bright accent on there. So you don't want too much of it. But just in the right places, you can see how that just really sparks this up. So again, just a few of these really bright highlights in a few places, not to overdo it. Now, I'm pretty happy with the way that that foliage looks. If you want to add more foliage to yours, you can. Uh, if you want it to be taller, you can make it a little taller. If you want it to be short, you can make it shorter. Now, we're going to come back and add some extra bright clouds to our sky. So, I'm going to do this using a metal palette knife and some titanium white. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna kind of scrape this area on my palette to get any dried paint up. I'm just gonna scrape that up and wipe that off because we don't want that on our painting. So want nice, fresh paint. So I'm going to load my palette knife not quite at the tip and not all the way to the back. Not too much paint on it, but all the paint's on the back side of the palette knife. And I'm going to hold my breath and I'm just going to kind of scrub and scrape this white color on um, to brighten my clouds. Now, I'll take a little spray mister bottle with some water and I'll spritz the bottom of the cloud and using my magic blue shop towel, I'm going to just come in and just kind of soften and scrub the base of these clouds. And come over here where we've got that wet and just kind of soften this on. Soften as much as you want to, but you can see just how much brighter this white is. If you feel it's not moving, you can give it another quick spritz of water and then just come in and gently soften your cloud shapes. But this extra layer of white over the dried paint gives you a really nice soft cloud effect. You know, you can play around with this as much or as little as you want to, but don't take away all of your extra light color. So I really like this kind of nice bright uh, white and the contrast that I have with my blue sky behind there. And so that's our beautiful seascape. I hope it makes you want to take a quick vacation down to the shore. Join our Facebook group, Let's Paint with Plaid, where you'll get up to the minute information about all things Let's Paint. Please visit plaidonline.com forward slash Let's Paint, where you'll find information about skill builder videos, studio lessons, Let's Paint Live, and Folk Art One Stroke with Donna Dewberry.